In this video, we're going to be talking about the world's most intriguing internet mysteries. We're going to start off with some internet mysteries that everyone should know, and as we get deeper into this video, things are going to get a lot more obscure and dark. Also, I'm wearing this Christmas jumper, looking for Mrs. Claus. This is the only thing that's unwashed right now, I swear. <laughs> Let me know what you think of it down below. Anyway, let's get into this thing. So this first one I must have covered at least two or three times now. It is the most mysterious song on the internet and it is playing right now. You can hear it right now, it's in the background and it's awesome, right? It's a really good song. Only thing is, no one knows who made it. I spoke about it in the Unsolved Mysteries iceberg because it's unsolved. We still don't know to this very day, even though we are closer to tracking down who originally wrote the song. In years prior, a lot of people have come out of the woodwork saying it was them, but that's only because it's this massive internet mystery. We're now much closer to figuring out who this was, but still to this very day, going into 2022, we don't know. We have to cover all of the stuff that I've covered before, before we get into the good stuff, so Cicada 3301. Now, I'm going to grossly oversimplify things, but there are multiple videos covering this mystery, so if this piques your interest, please go check them out. Anyways, on January 4th, 2012, a user by the name of 3301 posted a message on 4chan saying that he was looking for only the most intelligent individuals to come into contact with. And so began the game of games, one of the most difficult puzzles known to man. Many puzzles and riddles had to be solved, with only the fastest to solve it allegedly being let in. Another game ensued the following year and since then not a single other request for new members has been put up. We don't know who they were for sure, we don't know what happened to anyone who won, who are Cicada, what do they want? We just don't know. Are they a force for good or evil? Are they still around today? I don't know, no one really knows apart from the members of Cicada. So I'm going to move on again, if you want a more in-depth analysis, I've covered it before in some videos, I'll link one up here, and yeah, go check it out if you're interested in that kind of thing. On to stuff I haven't covered in the past, this is the mystery of the Polybius. Polybius, Polybius, yeah. So this is perhaps more of an urban legend than a mystery. Either way, the tale goes as followed. The Polybius was apparently an arcade game that was a government-run crowdsourced psychology experiment that produced intense psychoactive and addictive effects on all of the innocent people who played it. There weren't many of these game consoles, but where there were, allegedly, men in black would frequently come to visit. These men were in charge of analysing and data mining. This happened back in Portland, Oregon back in 1981, and within one month of the release of the Polybius, it disappeared forever. Did it exist in the first place, and if it did, was it as addictive as people say? If it was, was the government in on it, and what could they have wanted? This is the third entry today that doesn't have an answer, but I do promise you that some of these do. Most of them don't, most of them are unsolved, but some of them do. Either way, this is not one of them. The Markovian Parallax Denigrate. Now, if you don't know what this is, I'll try and explain it as simply as I can for you, because the name makes it seem as though you have to be really smart to understand it, but really you don't. Simply put, the Markovian Parallax Denigrate is a series of hundreds hundreds of messages posted into Usenet in 1996. The messages, which appeared to be gibberish, were all posted with the subject line Markovian Parallax Denigrate. Was there a method to this madness? Well, not too much was known about this until 2012, because in 2012 an article was written about it, calling it one of the first great mysteries of the internet, and this really popularised the mystery. Up until then, it wasn't too known about, but this definitely did shoot it into that next tier. However, since then, the case is still unsolved. We don't really know what was going on here. We don't know what he was talking about. The case is unsolved. This one, to my understanding at least, is very stupid. This is the case of John Teeter. In the early 2000s, someone known as John Teeter was doing the rounds of online bulletin boards claiming that he was a time traveller from, get this, the year 2036. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, in 15 years, in a mere 15 years, we will have time travel capabilities. Of course, this is all hindsight. We never have any clue where we're going to be in 36 years, but I could probably make a good guess that by 2057, we still won't have time travel technology. So the fact that we could have it in 2036 is bonkers. Anyways, John Teeter made various predictions that now we can confirm to be untrue. He claimed that in 2005, there would be a civil war in the US based on the election that took place in 04. You know, the tamest presidential election of the 21st century. Do you even know who lost the 2004 presidential election? It was John Kerry. 
And I put a small wager that a good portion of the people watching this video don't even know who John Kerry was. Back on topic, this would cause the US to split into five different regions and culminate in a short but intense World War III that ended in 2015 between the US and Russia. Now, if you're over the age of six, could you tell me, did this happen? 2015, six years ago, um, no, it didn't happen, unfortunately. And if you're under the age of six, please get off this video, it's not for you. <laughs> Despite what I might think, this timeline could be excused because since he went back in time, apparently things might have been different. He might have changed the course of time. Very convenient, just saying, very convenient that one man going back in time prevented a World War III. Either way, to my knowledge, the identity of John Tito was never uncovered, so whilst we might be able to debunk his time travelling theories, he could still be among us to this very day. He could watch this video. He might very well do that. The Solway Firth Spaceman, another one I've covered in the past. It was her mum. I've covered it twice in the past, and the first time I said it was unsolved. Apparently it was, and it was her mum. If you don't know the story, a photographer took a picture of his young child, and in the background, there seems to be a spaceman, which is really weird because the space landings didn't happen for another five years. So what could this be? Well, cameras back in the 1960s were quite poor. The aperture might have been poor, but either way, it made her mum look like a spaceman, which she obviously was not. The man. This is another mystery I've covered in the past. I promise we will get to some new unique ones, basically. So what this was, was it was a guerrilla marketing campaign for a movie that hadn't come out and actually was never released. But the idea was that it was just this thing online saying, if you've seen this man in your dreams, you're like everyone else. We all see him in our dreams. That would be trippy. The only thing is, it didn't actually exist. I've never seen this man in my dreams. And yeah, it was just a guerrilla marketing campaign for a movie that never released. Okay, this is the part of the video where things start to get very dark actually and I would recommend if you're not comfortable with the topics being discussed, please leave the video. So the tragic story of Elisa Lam took place in 2013. She's been done to death on YouTube but she's on the iceberg so I will cover her. Anyways, in 2013 Elisa Lam went missing in California. She was last spotted in a hotel. Authorities discovered her last known whereabouts after reviewing some elevator footage and seeing her in panic. It seemed as though something was off. It seemed as though she thought someone was there because she was talking to and gesturing to someone or something outside the elevator. Days later, she was found in the water tank of the hotel after complaints of low water pressure, the water turning black, and most disturbingly of all, the water tasting funny. Thoughts and theories on her death circled around the internet and people wanted to get to the bottom of this. The most likely theory is that she accidentally drowned with no evidence of physical trauma, sexual assault or suicide. What remains a mystery is how she got into the tank. The internet still hasn't put this entire story together but even so, this will be the last time I speak of Elisa Lam. Her story breaks my heart and I've covered her in the past as well so this will be the last time I ever talk about Elisa Lam. On to the next tier, things again are getting more obscure and dark. Grave robbing for morons. This is the first time I have ever heard of this entry. And it's a VHS of an unidentified man. He has never been identified. He explains how to successfully rob a grave and then sell the remains on the black market. Be your own judge for whether you think that this video is real or fake. Some people think the skull is fake or perhaps it's a medical skull. Some people think that this is all phony. I actually think this is real. I think this guy was actually a grave rubber. I think that the skull is way too realistic to be a prop. I think it's way too dirty to be a medical skull. And after sifting through Reddit, people seem to agree. The guy doesn't give entirely correct instructions, but he gives half correct instructions, meaning that he might be quite new to this, but he does have an inkling of what he's going on about. Of course, this is if you can trust people on Reddit. Him making this video makes it seem even more real. And as I said before, he never was identified. He actually got away with it. And so the identity of this boy whether or whether or not he actually robbed the grave to this day is still a mystery and this must be 20, 30 years old maybe so he would look completely different now. As far as we know, unless he was apprehended by the authorities at some point, he got away with it. The next entry I have is Oinir's last video. This is another tragic tale of a life taken much too soon, this one being Oinir's death. 
Apologies if I mispronounce her name, I do not speak the wonderful language of Korean. As I was, Oine was a Korean actress and model. In September 2020, she died of cardiac arrest due to suicide. In July 2019, she created a YouTube channel, and this video that I'm playing right now was her final. The mystery here to many people is surrounding the glitch that occurs 48 seconds into the video. For some reason, 48 comes up a lot in her death. The glitch occurred between the 48 second mark and the minute 48 second mark in the video. In here was born in 1984, backwards 48. She weighed 48 kilograms and was pronounced dead 48 hours after publishing the video. Additionally, the number 48 means that something will be coming to an end soon. Closure is close. Finally, the clock in the background reads 6 and 8, which if you multiply them, is 48. Perhaps this is a bit of a stretch, but the glitch only goes on for one minute, and by the time it's done, the clock jumps ahead by three minutes, which is strange. The video was subsequently removed from her account, but has since been re-uploaded to YouTube. What did 48 mean to Inhe? We might never know. 11BX1371. This was a strange video uploaded to YouTube by Parker Wright in 2015. Its follow-up video, 11B1369, would be released a few months later. While at first, a lot of people were trying to decipher what this could possibly mean, I think it's been confirmed that these videos were just artistic projects. I mean, they look really cool. This guy could give Hollywood a run for their money, but I believe that these are just art projects. Satoshi Nakamoto is the alleged name of the man who invented Bitcoin, however, some think that this is merely a pseudonym. Due to the success of Bitcoin, many people have claimed to be Nakamoto, but so far we haven't found out his true identity. This might be because it's estimated that Nakamoto has between 750,000 and 1.1 million Bitcoin. This would make him worth an estimated $73 billion, making him one of the richest people in the world. And finally, just to put that into context, he's worth a massive 3 quadrillion, 86 trillion, 75 billion Iranian real. On his P2P profile back in 2012, a good few years before the Bitcoin thing really started getting as massive as it is today, he claimed to be a 37 year old from Japan. But based on his native level of English, some people were speculative. Speaking of English, based upon his dialect, using the phrases bloody hard and the term flat when referring to a building and maths instead of math, some people believe that he is actually from the United Kingdom. To add to this, when time stamping his messages in Japanese standard time, almost none of his posts were between 2pm and 8pm when you would expect someone in Japan to perhaps be on the internet. In the UK, this would be between 5am and 11am when many people might be asleep. So it's therefore plausible that he might be from the United Kingdom or perhaps Europe. There are a lot of fun theories to the identity of this man, but as I said before, we still have no concrete hard evidence to who Nakamoto actually is. Shima Luan, this comes from the YouTube channel Planet Dolan, whereby one of the writers and most popular co-stars of the channel, Shima, went missing. People had noticed that she was gone from videos for quite some time, and in the video titled The Future of Planet Dolan, Dolan explained that nobody really knew where she was, they just hoped that she was safe. Many years later, another collaborator on the channel, Hellbent, confirmed that she was safe and alive, but not much more, and on December 23rd, 2020, her profile picture on YouTube changed, leading some people to believe that she might be coming back. She hasn't released a video in the year since, so whilst we know that she's alive, we still do not know where she is. We will just hope that she's safe. Next we have the cursed Kleenex advert that aired in Japan in 1986. And if you care about curses, if you're superstitious, I would skip to the timestamp on the screen because apparently if you watch this thing, you will become cursed. Alright, that's fair warning, so here it is. So yeah, it's strange. The mystery here is apparently if you watch this at midnight, the advert is different. This is untrue, you can test it for yourself, I wouldn't, but you can. Apparently it's been debunked as untrue, I mean of course it is untrue. So this advert was pulled soon after it aired for obvious reasons. I understand that Japan likes to go off the walls with their adverts, they like to make them really big and memorable, but it's Kleenex. What, why do you need a weird baby? Allegedly, the reason why it was so popular is because no one had seen it for years before it surfaced online. Also, what is up with the orange baby? Am I the only one that wants to know? 
who thought it would be a good idea to paint a baby orange and put it in the advert? I don't know, either way, we're moving on. So now we're on to the 15th entry on this iceberg. Number 15, Burger King foot lettuce. The last thing you want on your Burger King burger is someone's foot fungus, but as it turns out, that might be what you get. A 4 channel uploaded the photo anonymously to the site, showcasing his feet in a plastic bin of lettuce with the statement, this is the lettuce you eat at Burger King. Admittedly, he had shoes on, but that's even worse. The post went live at 11.38pm on July 16th, and a mere 20 minutes later, the Burger King in question was alerted to the rogue employee. At least, I hope he's rogue. How did it happen? Well, a BK employee hadn't removed the EXIF data from the uploaded photo, which suggested that the culprit was somewhere in Mayfield Heights, Ohio. This was at 11.47. Three minutes later, at 11.50, the Burger King branch address was posted with wishes of happy unemployment. Five minutes later, the news station was contacted by another 4 chana and three minutes later, at 11.58, a link was posted. Burger King's Tell Us About Us online form. The foot photo, otherwise known as Exhibit A, was attached. Cleveland Scene Magazine contacted the Burger King in question the next day. When questioned, the breakfast shift manager said, Oh, I know who that is. He's getting fired. Mystery solved by 4chan, and now we can all go back to eating our fast food in peace. I absolutely ripped that word from word off from Chills. Go watch his video on it because it's amazing. Everyone knows Burger King foot lettuce. This isn't a surprise. On to the next. Tyler's last words. So this one is quite creepy, but I have you know right now, this is fake. This has been debunked. This is not real. Having said that, I will try to explain it. What this video is, is it's a short song sung by Austin Cross, and at the end of the video, he pulls a gun to his head. The man in the video did not kill himself. This was meant to be a tribute to his brother Tyler, who had sadly passed earlier that year. The video did do the rounds of the internet, and since Austin Cross's channel has removed the video. A lot of people thought that he actually killed himself. He did not. The Evil Farming Game, this is quite an interesting entry. So there was this video game some bloke on the internet could remember, similar to Harvest Moon if you've ever played that one. But in this one, you kill your wife and try and cover it up from the police simultaneously trying to maintain your crop farm. This seems to have engaged online communities because there are 13.6 thousand people that are part of a subreddit dedicated to the topic. Here's the thing though, it's actually been solved. As it turns out, the man who brought this game to light actually dreamed it whilst watching a Vine Source stream. This case has in fact been solved. This next one is very creepy actually. The Wyoming incident took place back in August 2006, when a hacker managed to interrupt a news broadcast from a local news station and wrote a bunch of text and showed pictures of human heads with some creepy music played in the background. Just who did this? Why did they do it? What were their reasons? Nothing has ever been found out about who did this. The mystery is so enigmatic. There are a lot of people that don't even think that it happened in the first place. Some people think that it was actually a hoax. If it did, did it have any meaning? We haven't really been able to find out any meaning to the words, to the letters, to the messages on the screen. We just don't know. There have been plenty of videos covering the topic in more depth. So if you're interested, I will link one in the description. Go check it out. So next up we have The Clockman, Lost Media Fans, this one is for you. If you've never heard of this tale, back in 2012, someone made a comic with the caption, please help me find this cartoon that scared me for 28 years. For 28 years, someone has been haunted by this cartoon they saw as a child. And this sent the internet mad. People searched high and low for answers, for clues, for anything, and their efforts came up short for five years. For five years, people were looking for this cartoon and they could not find it, but eventually they did. Five years after the original post on the Lost Media Wiki, a user by the name of NitroNerd posted what was the lost cartoon finally found. Its name, Oparadive Sally. And okay, I know this isn't meant to be scary. It's just meant to be a child's cartoon, but I can totally see why the author would have been scared. There's just something about the animation, the narration. This shit seems like a bit of a bad trip. I'm not even gonna lie. This thing kind of scares me and I'm a grown man. And this is meant to be a child's cartoon. There's something about it that's just eerie. Either way, the mystery was solved over 30 years after it originally scared the creator. 
As it turns out, this was a Czech cartoon released on Nickelodeon back in the 1980s. The Evil Stick. This is one that I ran into online in the past. So this toy really should have been on the Dumbest and Darkest Toys iceberg that I made a few months ago, but it's a little toy and the big controversy around it is on the back, behind some foil, is this picture of a demonic person cutting themselves. I don't think based on YouTube's guidelines I'll be able to show it, but it's on the internet. I'll put a link in the description if you want to see. It's quite graphic and it's quite weird, but it is there if you want to see it. It's just the evil stick, look it up online. I've heard many theories behind what this is meant to be. Some people thought that it was a Halloween joke toy, but from what we know, the woman in the picture was later identified as a French woman named Aubrey, modeling in 2002 for a photo shoot by graphic design artist Butcher Ludwig. The picture of Aubrey was used without the artist's permission, as was the character on the packaging. Who made this? Why was it made? How was it imported to the USA without anyone realizing? As with many of these, we don't have any answers. The mystery remains unsolved to this very day. It is quite an enigma. What happened to Kenny Veach? This is his story. Kenny Veach was a hiker who roamed the deserts of Nevada, but in November 2014, he would go missing. A short while before he did, he made a comment on YouTube discussing this strange M-shaped cave that drove wild sensations within him, and eventually created a YouTube video on the search for the cave, but was unable to locate it. On November 10th, 2014, he would go on a hike to locate the cave, a hike that he would never return from with the only real clue that we've ever found since being his cell phone, allegedly at least. He never used a GPS, so he would be very hard to track, and after watching his videos, he seemed like a very nice man. The likelihood is that Beach died after an accident exploring an unknown cave, but there are some theories such as he witnessed an illegal activity taking place and was killed because of it, or that he's alive and left to start a new life, or because this is Nevada, he was too close to Area 51 and the government had him killed. There are so many theories and ideas on his death. Whatever it may be, and wherever he may be, I think we all hope that he rests in peace. Barbie AVI is the next mystery I'll be talking about, so what is it? Well, Barbie AVI is allegedly a 40 minute long video file from a computer that was put in the bin on an abandoned industrial estate. The video contains footage of a woman in a plain white room with the audio distorted, so it's really just visuals we can see. We don't know what the woman is saying. However, it's clear that throughout the video, she gets more upset and uncomfortable. And at the very end of the video, it's shown for the first time that the woman only has one arm. There's some more story that goes along with this, but it's all creepypasta and not real. And if you know me, I hate creepypasta, so I'm not going to go into that because it's fiction. What is real, however, is that this woman's name is Sharon and the interviewer's name is Mike Rounds. He was a man who worked with amputees and went on to provide some insights, revealing that Sharon lost her arm in an accident at 16 years old and was mentally stunted by the tragic accident. The interview was her reflecting on it, so it makes sense why she seemed uncomfortable comfortable, this was one internet mystery that eventually was solved. Monkey Hates. I'm surprised that this entry is so low because it has done the rounds of the internet, but the reason that it exists in the first place still baffles me to this very day. So Monkey Hate is this rabbit hole that was discovered on YouTube a few years back, and it is one of the most disturbing rabbit holes you will ever come across. For some reason, I don't know why, there is a substantial community of people around the world absolutely despise monkeys and want to see them getting tortured and beaten and hurt and in pain. They gain some sick pleasure from seeing these monkeys in pain, specifically baby monkeys. Some of these comments date back 10 years or so, a long time before it was discovered by the rest of the internet, leading many people to believe that this isn't a joke, it's sincere hatred. The comments that they leave are absolutely disgusting, and I've had some people in my videos in the past try to rationalise monkey hate. Some people rationalise it by saying monkeys are pests in some countries. Seagulls and foxes are considered pests in the UK. I've been attacked by a seagull twice, and if I saw one in pain, it would make me sad just like a rational human being. I've named my channel after the fox. If you like seeing a defenseless animal in pain, you're a psychopath, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it, there is something wrong with you. This is unsolved because we just don't know enough about monkey haters yet. It's still quite unclear why people hate monkeys so much, but hopefully within time, we will get to the bottom of this mystery. John Lang was a Fresno resident who believed he was being stalked and harassed by the local police back in 2016. 
He eventually died under very mysterious circumstances that same year, but before, he had recorded CCTV footage of some very peculiar events going on. From potential strangers coming up to his house to see if he was in, to a suspicious plain black van with a supposed infrared camera aimed squarely at his property. In the final video that he uploaded, the description was as followed. I think I seen a couple of guys sneak out of the side door and into the building when it was parked in the carport this afternoon. I've been causing the city of Fresno quite a lot of problems recently, which I now regret. He would be found dead three days after the release of this video, with three stab wounds in his body and his house set on fire. This was ruled as a suicide, with the stab wounds allegedly being self-inflicted. However, one was to his back, so a lot of people are quite interested if this is the whole truth. John Lang was clearly paranoid, but just because someone is paranoid doesn't mean that whatever they're concerned about isn't real. He thought he was going to die, is this because he was going to kill himself? Or were his concerns built on something very real? If you've watched this channel for a while, you'll know that I'm not too big into conspiracy theories, but what happened to John Lang, there's something not right about it. There's something a bit fishy about what happened to him. This is one of the first cases where I actually think that John Lang might have been onto something, but I can't be sure. What do you think though? This is such a crazy case. Please do let me know in the comments. Kate Yup. This one is very strange for a lot of reasons. We really are in the dark parts now. Firstly, this channel had 1.24 million subscribers and was meant to be an ASMR mukbang channel. This isn't weird to most people, but mukbangs are really weird to me. I don't understand. <laughs> How do you get your first subscriber from a mukbang? Someone just wants to see you eat food. Maybe I'm just an old man now. I don't understand why we want to watch other people eat food, especially this, because the food she was eating, she ate a lot. She ate so much food. Throughout her time on YouTube, some people were alerted to mysterious red flags. In one of her videos, she tapped on a glass in Morse code that can be translated to SOS. In another video, she wrote, this meat is so delicious, with the SO and subsequent S all capitalized. Again, SOS. She appeared with bruises and a cut to her lip in one video, and in another, a voice can be heard in the background saying, fast, hurry up just eat and most worryingly of all i'm going to kill you she uploaded her final video in october 2019 nobody has seen or heard from her since nobody knew who she was back then nobody knew who she is now nobody knows if she's alive and safe or if she's dead or worse the trail runs cold from there could this have been some sort of weird arg back in 2019 potentially it's also possible that she was kidnapped or killed, and this is what the majority of the internet believe. As of December 2021, we still have no answers. The Haunted Mine. This video was brought to the limelight by exploring abandoned mines and unusual places, a YouTube channel that, if you didn't know, explores abandoned mines and unusual places. This guy also apparently found the M cave that Kenny Veach found many years ago. He is currently on the hunt for Kenny Beach, so we got two entries kind of colliding here, which is kind of cool. He's also explored the Haunted Mine in Nevada, and I was going to shout this guy out because I think his content is really cool, but he fakes some of his videos. Even after discovering this out, I still think his videos are really well done and put together, and even his fakes are quite realistic. Anyways, long story short, he went to the Haunted Mine in Nevada, and there he saw some bad juju in that mine. First off, it's creepy AF. And then later in the video, for seemingly no reason, a chain starts swinging about. It was confirmed as real in the show Strange Evidence in the episode The Devil's Mutant, but years later, a YouTube channel called Scare Theater was able to rationally debunk at least a bit of the channel. We don't know for sure if this video specifically is disproven, but some of his videos in the past have been confirmed as fake. In one of his videos in which he encountered what he thought was a ghost, he actually used some scary whisper sound effects that he found on YouTube. The fact of the matter is that these videos get a lot of views, and so every now and then he might have to make one. Either way, the Haunted Mine was most likely a hoax. Not certainly, but most likely. Oh man, okay, yeah, this one just creeps me out. This one just creeps me out, and I am hesitant to bring it to you, but I think I have to because it is on the iceberg. I would recommend 
not researching this one just because i really don't want any of you guys to fall down this rabbit hole but here we go here it is the entry is 973 etnamo 973 and this is one of the internet's oldest and most mysterious websites at first glance this website isn't much but as you start finding the hidden links it takes you on a wild ride there's a lot about biblicism and even more about the number nine for some reason number nine appears everywhere. There are so many creepy pictures and to the untrained observer, this website is incredibly hard to navigate. I just clicked some random links to see what works, but deep into this site, there is a forum and you need to be warned that the people on these forums can be very persuasive. Could this be a religious group or cult? It's tough to say. I really don't know anything near enough the amount that I do about Etnamo to tell you that these guys are bad news or good news. As I said, this site is a massive rabbit hole and I just haven't been able to discover it enough. I didn't go deep enough to find the forum, so I don't know what these guys are like. Heed my warning and slate me if you want to, but I'm not going any deeper into this entry because this one freaks me out a little bit, to be honest. This is one rabbit hole I'm not going down. Too creepy for me. Let's move on. Okay, yeah, we're really into the dark stuff now. Ruth Price. So a few content creators have covered this creepy phone call in the past, but if you've never heard of it, the story goes like this. Ruth Price was allegedly an old lady who lived alone, and one day there was a suspicious man outside of her house. She supposedly, but debatably, called the authorities, and here's what played. What's the problem, ma'am? Oh, there's some guy been uh, checking the place out. Oh, well, he went in the back. I have an apartment in the back, and he said he was looking for a guy, and he comes to my door, and... Yeah. And, uh said he's uh, looking for an apartment. So I'm, I live alone, and I'm an old lady. Mm -hmm. I'm kind where, of, where is he now, ma'am? I don't have no idea. I'm going to cut it there because the next 20 seconds or so are violent violent screams from Ruth Price, leading many people to believe that she was killed by the suspicious man. It's entirely possible that the man was just trying to break in though, and her screams were just a reaction to that. From there though, the call is apparently hung up and we don't know for absolute certainty what happened. The call was made in the 1980s and since Ruth was an old woman then, she would have likely passed since. So in the age of the internet, it's impossible to reach out to her. I don't have much more to say on that one. Whether she was getting killed or not is debatable, but alas, this still remains an unsolved mystery till this very day. The Paris Catacombs found footage. So the Paris Catacombs are a massive series of interconnected tunnels found beneath the streets of Paris, France. And in the early 2000s, a documentary crew allegedly discovered a lost videotape from the underground maze. The footage is of a man exploring the catacombs, but eventually it's made clear that he doesn't know where he's going. His mind starts playing tricks on him and he starts running, perhaps thinking that something's following him. He finally drops his camera and is never seen again. So is this real or was the documentary crew staging it? If a person was to lose their bearings in the Paris catacombs, the likelihood is that they would die. There are very few entries and exits. It's a massive maze filled with hundreds and thousands, if not millions of corpses. It's known as the world's largest communal grave because hundreds of years ago, everyone that died in Paris, France was buried there. So it's got to be one of the creepiest places in the world. Having said that, maybe the documentary crew could have just wanted a bit of extra spice for their project. Speaking of documentary, I'm still making my own based on social media. I don't want to give too much away, but if you are an established content creator, please email foxkimbo at gmail.com if you are interested in participating, of course, especially if you're from the UK. For this next entry, I'm going to paraphrase RocketChick94's post on the subject on Reddit because her telling is excellent. On September 12th, 2008, in California's San Fernando Valley, a commuter train carrying 225 riders collided at a combined speed of 83 miles per hour with a freight train run by a crew of three in what came to be known as the Chatsworth Crash. 135 people were injured, of which 87 people were taken to hospital and of them, 46 were in critical condition. 25 people died, one of those being 49-year-old Charles E. Peck. Peck's body was recovered from the wreckage 12 hours after the incident, yet for the first 11 of those hours, his cell phone placed call after call to his loved ones, calling his son, his brother, his stepmother, 
his sister and his fiance. In all, his various family members received 35 calls from his cell phone throughout the long night. And when they answered, all they heard was static. When they called back, everything went straight to voicemail. The barrage of calls prompted search crews to trace the whereabouts of the phone through its signal and to once again look through what was left of the first train. The searchers finally found Peck's body about an hour after the calls from his cell phone had stopped. Charles Peck died on impact. Yet long after his death, his cell phone had continued to reach out to many of those he cared most about and ultimately led rescuers to his remains. As far as investigators revealed, they never found Peck's cell phone. Could this be a ghost trying to communicate with his loved ones one last time? Could this be some sort of prankster trying to get some sick kick out of it? To this day, there is absolutely no explanation to how this could have happened. The Sakhalin Seawolf. I believe that I might have covered this in a previous video, but let's cover it again. This was found by Russian soldiers back in 2006, and many people thought that this was some sort of weird new animal. Apparently, the teeth had been confirmed as not having come from a fish, and the skeleton revealed that it was neither croc nor alligator. So, what was this? Well, to my knowledge, this has been confirmed as nothing important. It is most likely the rotting corpse of a whale or a beluga. And for the final entry today, you have 30 days to pay me $5 million. So go do it now. Where's your PayPal, guys? Uh, on a real though, this was a video that dropped a few years ago of a man constructing a little remote control car and then traveling to Egypt with a camera attached onto it allegedly driving this car inside the walls of the Pyramid of Giza with the threat that if no money was paid, the full video would be released. It's assumed that this video is targeted towards the Egyptian government, but as with a lot of this, not much is known. Either way, no one ever paid up, so the creator eventually did release the full video, and it revealed nothing. <laughs> it revealed nothing. About five seconds later, Static covered the screen, and he was like, oh, you win this round, but I'll get the next time. He was trying to extort them out of absolute nothing. This video was likely faked because whilst you saw the guy create the car and you saw some sort of footage of potentially inside walls, you never actually see him put it in there, and that is the million dollar shot. We want to see him infiltrate it, but it was never shown. The most vital part of the video was missing. I call it fake. Got a little LucasAid sport here. Nectar of gods. So this video is getting quite long and if I'm honest it's getting quite dark for my own likings. And so I'm only going to do a second part of this video if there's a very high demand for it. The last time I asked for a like goal and I was serious, you guys absolutely smashed it. So I'm going to do it again and I'm going to raise the bar a bit higher. If this video can get 4,000 likes, 4,000 likes, I will make a part two. I don't think it's going to happen, but I want to see if it can. So 4,000 likes and I'll make a part two. If it doesn't get that many, I will not. So make sure you hit the like button. And also, if you liked it, please do subscribe. If you just watched through a 40 minute video of mine, subscribe to me if you're not already. For every thousand subscribers I get before the end of the year, I'm donating 10 pounds to Team C's. So there really isn't any reason for you not to subscribe. I also have a Twitter and Instagram and a Discord, which you can join and you can follow. I have a Patreon that would be really nice if you supported. Here are my current patrons now on the screen. You guys are the best and I'll be releasing a new video very soon for you guys. Aside from that, I want to thank Fergie for creating this iceberg. And lastly, please let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see me do next because I'm only 88 videos in and I'm already out of ideas. Thank you for watching.